What is up guys? This is Coach Daniel and I hope you enjoyed my last video about what to know for ping pong robot training. In this video, I want to talk about the rhythm of the ball and the body in table tennis, which I think is one of the most important things that you need to understand and to apply and train to improve. If you feel that you don't have time to attack during the game, if you feel like you swing so hard but your ball is so soft and slow, if you feel like your swing form is so inconsistent, if you feel like you can't read the ball, if you feel like your body is so slow, and there are many more problems that come along when you don't understand the rhythm of the ball and the body. So, if you're experiencing any of these problems listed above, please watch till the end of this video because what I'm about to share is essential and relevant to all players who want to improve. You can apply this concept to any technique to really sharpen your skills. First, the rhythm of the ball. There are four contacts and four periods for the ball's rhythm, then I divide them into ten periods for more specifics. But in this video, we'll just stick to four contacts and four periods for simplicity. A rally is a cycle that always has four contacts. Player A hits the ball when it hits the table, then player B hits the ball, then it hits the table. Then it repeats. And in between these contacts, we have four periods while the ball is in the air traveling to the next point. Simply, I'll name these contacts as contact 1, 2, 3, 4, period A, B, C, D. Then, we have five stages for the body's rhythm. Stage 1, neutral position. This is the optimal ready position for you to reach anywhere you need to. You may also call it a ready position. Stage 2, prepare your swing. This is where you prepare to swing for any stroke that you want to play. And remember that our feet and body move into the position first, not the arm. Stage 3, the pause. After you prepare to swing, you need to have a pause or wait for the perfect contact point. This pause is very short, it's almost like a split second, but it's crucial to feel that you have time to wait for the ball to come to the perfect contact point, to have consistency and power on your strokes. Stage 4, swing to contact. This is where you strike the ball and follow through. Stage 5, recovery. This is where you would recover after your stroke to get back to stage 1. Now, let's take a look at how each of them corresponds to each other. We'll look at it from player B's perspective as player A starts the rally. Stage 1 corresponds to period D. Player B will be in stage 1, which is a neutral position, to observe A's preparation till A strikes the ball. This neutral position is not only being ready for the next stroke, but needs to have intuition of the next ball. You have to observe your opponent's pre-motion to have an idea what kind of ball he or she will play. If you don't pay attention or can't see his motion, it will be hard for you to read the ball and therefore lay for the second stage, which is to prepare your swing. One tip here is that you need to observe the whole body at the same time Focus on the opponent's wrist because it tells what he or she is about to do and help you to predict. So remember, stage 1 is where you simultaneously observe your opponent's movement to predict and indicate the return. Stage 2 corresponds to contact 1 through contact 2, including period A. The earlier, the better. As soon as A contacts the ball, B will be in stage 2, which is to prepare to swing. Although some players were born with very good reactions and reflexes, which give them a huge advantage when it comes to sports, through training, you can improve on this. You can only move into the perfect position ASAP when you can read your opponent's movement and indicate the next ball as soon as the opponent plays the ball. Personally, I always include random balls during training to improve my students' reaction and their ability to react to the next ball once they have learned a proper stroke and how to move into a good position. Because I believe that stage 1 and 2 are really important and differentiate a good player from a great player. As you train more and play more games, you can read better. Then, the faster you can react, the more time you have for the next shot. And the more time you have, the better shot you can play. And this piles up during the match, so you will be able to control the game. That's why when you are playing against a more advanced player, they seem to have more time. Right after you play a ball, you can find that they are already ready when you see them. It's not necessarily because they are super faster than you, it's just because they move earlier than you. In addition, most amateurs who feel that they are late and or struggle to have power or consistency on their shot are mostly because they didn't understand stage 1 and 2 and didn't train for those. I think most people are capable of moving into the next position in terms of speed, but most beginners are late because they can't or don't read while they were in position 1. So basically they see things but not reading and they wait for the ball to come to their side instead of moving first then wait for the ball to come. To improve this, you need to consistently train so that your body is capable of moving at the right time as you observe your opponent's movements and play and train a lot to accumulate data of the courses of the ball so you can find a better position. And if you're wondering that you're doing great in the training but not playing good during an actual match, Random drills are one of the best ways to improve your game because it's like a game situation. Don't get too nervous and try to play like Fan Zhendong during a match. Find your own pace and practice as if it's a match and play a match as if it's a training. For you to be able to prepare quickly, there's another condition which is to recover on time from your previous shot, which is stage 5, so that you can watch your opponent. I'll explain this on the last stage.
So moving to stage 3, if you were able to read the next ball and prepared into the best position to play, it's not the time to swing yet, but to wait till the ball comes to the perfect contact point. And this is why I made a forehand contact video to understand where the good contact point is according to your position. This is very crucial because only at the perfect contact point, you can have power, consistency, and maximum swing speed. Simply, only at the perfect contact point, your shot will be efficient. Stay tuned because there will be a video about power, why this pause or waiting for a perfect point is important. Also, if you're struggling to have power or consistency on your shot, it's because there is no pause waiting and calculating for the best contact point. And the reason why you can't wait is because you didn't have time to wait due to late preparation. And you were late because you couldn't read the opponent's motion, thus could not indicate the next ball. In the beginning, players tend to wait to move instead of moving first, then wait. Remember that if you can have just a small pause and are able to wait just a little for the perfect contact point, you can really speed up your swing to maximum speed and still have consistency with power. Stage 4 corresponds to contact 3. Try to keep your eyes on the ball to see which contact point you want to play and to know which part of your pedal you're using to maximize the efficiency of the stroke. Many beginners tend to guess where the ball is from its trajectory. When I force my students to actually look at the ball when they are playing, I have observed that they feel weird in the beginning and their shots can become somewhat inconsistent. Then, they sometimes forget to look at the ball and are not willing to look at the ball at the contact point. But for those who persist to look at the ball throughout the training, definitely improve in the long run. So if you can build a habit from the beginning to watch the ball until you contact the ball, you will have better consistency on your shot as you can read better and find the best contact point. This is why when you see advanced players train, their heads will remain facing to the contact point right after they play instead of turning their heads as they play. Because if you turn your head as you play, you probably didn't watch till the end. And remember that whatever you do after you contact the ball, like looking at the ball will not affect the ball. So it's really important to give all attention before and at the contact point to have consistency. Try not to look ahead to see how your ball flies and where it lands. Because as long as you have an efficient stroke, your shot will land where it's supposed to land. Guessing and indicating are two different things. And if you can watch and indicate where the ball is, it will help you improve your stroke a lot, especially in higher level matches. Finally, stage five. Stage 5 corresponds to period C through D. As you train to look at the ball to play the ball on stage 4, right after your stroke, you need to recover before your ball reaches contact 1, which is your opponent's stroke. If you observe advanced players, you will find that they have good space to swing before they hit the ball to maximize their power, and short follow-through swings right after they contact the ball, to recover as soon as possible, to read and get ready for the next ball. You will need to train a lot to be able to do this, but it gives you an idea that you do need to recover from your shot. So. Don't try to overpower your shot because you can make one shot, but won't be able to recover and have consistency. Great players use maximum speed on each shot that they can recover from, and the maximum speed varies depending on their position. The further they are from the table, the more speed they will generate by using their body fully, and the closer they are from the table, they will try to restrain power the focus to make a quicker shot by using their core, arms, and wrist. Eventually, you need to learn how fast you should play to be able to recover from each shot that you make to be consistent on the next shot. Basically, you always need to think ahead about the next shots you'll be making when you play. The faster you can recover during period D, the better position you'll be for the next ball, and the better position you're in, the better shot you can make. So to conclude, Stage 1 is during period D, Stage 2 is any time after contact 1 through contact 2, Stage 3 is during period B, Stage 4 is at contact 3, Stage 5 is any time after contact 3 before contact 4. When any stage of this cycle is skipped, then it will affect everything else. It will be important for you to understand each stage, when and how to do it, and focus on each shot that you make to be able to apply during your training and match. There are many more things that I want to discuss on each stage, but that will make this video too long, so I'll make separate videos of each stage to explain more in detail in the future. I hope this information were helpful to you, and thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment.